Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're going to look at how we can rotate our app registration secrets using logic apps and storing them into a key wall. Anyone who has worked with API pages or API endpoints in Business Central knows what an app registration is. Is the idea is you have a client ID and have a client secret, and this client secret and client ID is what is used to authenticate using OAuth. Now the problem is, however, is that these client secrets don't live forever. So at some point they're going to expire, and once they expire, you have to create a new one and send this to whoever is using it. Now, what I'm proposing here is that instead of waiting for it to expire and hopefully someone manually will create a new one, we're going to automatically renew this out this client secret, and we're also going to store it into a key vault, meaning that we can actually automate this to do it every two weeks if that's what we want to create a new secret and anyone accessing our client secret for going forward is going to have to go through our Azure key vault because that means that we're not going to have any client secrets lying around places because everyone is going to access through our X, our Azure key vault so to, to do this we're going to need some things of course first we're going to need our app registration. Now the important thing about our app registration is that it's going to need some API permissions. Now we can have either the same app registration that is going to be used to renew app registrations, which is kind of meta, or you can have a separate app registration from the one using against Business Central. In this case, I'm just having this one uh, which is, needs some permissions to a Microsoft Graph. I have them here. To add these permissions, you all go to Add Permission. And then we go to Microsoft Graph. We go to Application Permissions, and then we add the ones we need. Now, we, the reason why we're going to need this is because you are going to use Microsoft Graph to actually create a new client secret for an app registration. Yes. Besides that, we have some things over here. We have some uh, uh, object ID and we have some tenants and stuff we're going to be needing, but we'll get back to that when we're going to use them. Next, we're going to need a key vault. So I have my key vault here. It's just a simple key vault I have. And at the moment I have one secret and of course, the first secret we're going to you need to have to create the first secret manually to store the first client secret. So once you create your client secret, copy it inside your Azure Key Vault, and that is what we're going to be using inside our Logic Apps to forward to renew. But it's only going to be used once, so it's not that important that you store it anywhere else than your Key Vault. Just make sure it's here for the first run. Once that is set up. I have a logic app over here. The important thing, however, is with our logic app that you go to here to identity. And you can see I have to turn my identity on. We have to do that. And then in Azure roles, I already given mine the, the permissions that it needs. But to do this, we go to add role. We choose our key vault. We say which subscription we're going to be using, which kind of resource, and then what kind of role. Now what this is doing is that we are telling Azure that our logic app is allowed to access our key vault without having to use connection strings and anything else because it's actually creating an intra user behind the scenes that is going to be used to access these resources. And this is important because that means that we are keeping everything secure inside Azure. So no one's going is not going to have to have any kind of uh, external URL or anything we have to set up. Once that is set up, we can look at how my key uh, sorry my um, logic app is set up. If I go to edit, and I have set up some parameters. So I've got my tenant ID, I got my client ID. And I got my object secret. And these are the things you can get from your app registration. So we had them over here. We had our object ID. And we had our tenant ID. 
and of course we also have our application ID here which is our client ID so add these as parameters then here using the connector I've added to get a secret and this is where if I go to change secret you can add new one and here we will say that we are using a managed identity because remember we just set up the managed identity so this is going to be using that one in. and then you give you the, the name of the vault and whatever you want to call your connection we then get the secret from our vault and using this URL which is the same URL you're also using when we normally get our token we will get our security token from we can use from Microsoft Graph I'll pass it and down here I will get whatever apps I have inside this Microsoft Graph uh, applications endpoint and then I'm using my update ID just so I'm only getting the ones that are relevant for my um, app registration I then pass it as JSON and then here again using Microsoft Graph I will remove the old one so that means at this at the moment when I'm running this I will first delete my current app registrations secret I will then add a new app, uh, um, secret client secret to my app registration once that has been added I will then use this endpoint to actually update using a put to update my Azure key wall with the new secret and again I'm using authentication I'm using managed identity so that means if I go over here and I go to my client secrets you see I have the auto key here and that's the one that has been automatically generated from my logic app and as I stated this is just running on a recurrence mine is running every three months this is of course a demo but this, this cool thing here is you can actually run it how often you want because normally when you would create a new client secret you always have the problem with having to distribute this to other people so you, you normally won't do it that often but the whole idea is that something that is, that is needed and has something to do with security it should be able to automatically be refreshed without having any consequences for any of the systems using it well that was actually it for this uh, video it was a short video but I hope you uh, learned something and I hope you are have some kind of strategy to handle your client secrets now remember there's also a link to the blog post below where you can also find all the different source code I've been using and so on and go in a little bit more detail but uh, until next time stay safe and thank you for watching. Goodbye.